hello guys hello everyone welcome back again to another sewing tutorial on this channel thank you so much guys for stopping by i really appreciate you guys thank you all for your support and your encouragement i can't thank you guys enough so guys in today's video we'll be learning how to draft a victorian corset i'll be showing you guys the easiest method you can achieve this you can get this done um, with this step-by-step -step process so guys if you're yet to subscribe please don't forget to do so if you have subscribed already thank you so much i love you guys so don't forget to also hit on the notification bell don't forget to like don't forget to comment let me know what you think about the tutorial let's all share our ideas together we're all here to learn so guys by doing this i get recommended by youtube so please kindly do so okay so guys without wasting much of your time let's get right into the tutorial thank you so much So guys, on the working table, I have my pattern paper with the basic block partially drafted. So guys, I'll be explaining what each line represents, why I am highlighting, so that I'll be able to carry everyone along, okay? So I've indicated the bust line, the under bust line, the waist line, and the lower part, I have the hip line, okay? You get to see that part much later. Then the center line, you can see there is the center front line. It represents no seam allowance, okay? You can choose to use the edge of your pattern paper or just create your own center front, okay? So for clarity, I did that. Okay, guys, so I, up above there, I have my shoulder line and I'll be placing, marking um, the vertical measurements from the shoulder line. So I marked my bust line from the shoulder line, the under bust and the waistline okay on the same shoulder line i went ahead to also establish my neck measurements and the shoulder measurement as well okay the neck width is four inches shoulder measurement is 7.5 okay so you guys just know your own shoulder measurement and then divide it by two and mark it on your pattern paper then this is my chest line okay the armhole establishes the chest line i say this all the time so i'll just quickly highlight the lines with my marker pen so that we can clearly see it okay so you can see that i just used a pencil so it might be faint enough for us to see the line so i'll highlight it properly so that we can clearly see what we're doing okay so guys while highlighting this line i want to use this medium to suggest for beginners to ensure that they have a clear understanding on how to draft the basic block that is the beginning there are tons of videos out there you can go ahead and check it out i also have a video on it you can quickly check it out okay so the next thing i'll quickly do is to get the midpoints of my armhole what i'm trying to do is to establish my armhole curve so after getting the midpoint of this line i went in by zero point five okay so i will just use my pattern master to link it up to the shoulder line and then i will use the curvy part to curve it towards the chest line but before doing this i will place the quarter of my bust circumference on the chest line it's very important that you do so it varies for different people so just place the quarter of your bust line on the chest line then you go ahead to use this measurement to draft your armhole curve okay this part is very important okay make sure you place the quarter of your arm um, your bust measurement on your chest line before drafting your armhole curve okay so guys what we'll simply do is to place our waist dart on the um on the pattern so the first thing to, to do before marking your waist dart is to mark place your um bust to bust measurement which is also known as a half bust span so for me mine is eight so eight divided by two i have four inches okay so you go ahead and mark four inches there and then you go ahead to link up this line from the bust line down to the hip measurement okay so the next thing to do is to determine your overbust contouring where you want your overbust contouring to um, be placed okay so i'll be using the radius of my underbust to determine that the radius of my underbust is 3.5 so if i want this my the victorian corset rather to really cover my bust area i will just mark 3.5 on that line which is above the bust line but for a little cleavage i will just come down and mark 2.5 inches so i made it of 2.5 inches 
there so i'll just mark 2.5 inches to accommodate that area which is above the bust line and then i'll link up these points together as you can see me doing so guys having done this the next thing we'll do is to go ahead and place the waist dart but for, before doing this on the bust line i'll simply come down by half an inch so i'll just mark half an inch below the bust line and then on the waist line i'm going to be marking 0.75 on both sides okay so please take note 0.75 on both sides and then on the hip line i would with that's the hip line okay I'll move up by one inch it's optional you don't have to do you can actually link it down without um, marking the one inch so I'll just go ahead and connect it to the markings on the waistline and then I'll link it up to the point to the apex of the bust okay I'll just link it up this way okay so guys we're good here okay so I'll go ahead and contour the overbust, but before doing this, I would like to, you know, draw attention to a particular method I felt that is also good to make use of, but I won't be making use of this method, but I just want to bring our attention to this, okay? So I'll be marking the midpoint of my shoulder seam, and then I'll link it up to the bust point, okay? Okay, so you could contour with this method, that's why I'm using a pencil first, because I know I wouldn't make use of this so i'm going to be contouring with this line with the shoulder line by 0 0.5 0 0.75 on both sides but the issue there is for beginners it may be a little bit challenging because there'll be need for you to blend because of gaping so it may be a little bit challenging for beginners to make use of this process okay this method of contouring the overbust with the shoulder seam there'll be need for you to blend because it may not match one may be longer than the other okay but i'll be applying this method what i simply did here was to mark my half butt span on that line which is four inches and then i drew a straight line so it's easier for me to contour here so i'm going to be marking 0 0.75 on both sides okay so using this method you won't really encounter much challenge of blending or en encounter a challenge of gaping one part being longer than the other okay because it's a straight line but the other one which is a bit slant using the shoulder seam it may be a little bit challenging as a result of gaping so um it's also good if you can blend it's also good okay so i'll go ahead and contour this point link it up to the bust line as you can see i, I made use of the curvy part of my pattern master okay so the next thing to do is to place the mark the horizontal measurement but be replacing the dart intake on the chest line on the bust line okay to avoid shortage of fabric we already have the quarter of a bust measurement there so i just simply replaced the dart intake there then i'll go ahead and mark my the quarter of my waist measurement which is your waist measurement divided by two and then i'll replace the dart intake of 1.5 then i'll also go ahead and mark the quarter of my hip measurement there okay so i'll simply go ahead and link this point together as you can see So guys this is what we have this is our regular bustier top okay so this is a this is just simply a bustier blouse the way it is now okay this is just a bustier blouse so i'll simply go ahead and contour the over bust okay i'll be contouring the sorry guys i'll be contouring the under bust okay so what i simply did here was to mark my under bust measurement okay the quarter of my under bust measurement and then i simply replaced the dart intake on that line okay so the difference there i have i have about 1.5 inches okay so i'll be making use of this remaining 1.5 inches to contour the under bust um the to contour the under bust rather so on the dart leg of the um the under bust line towards the center front i'm going to be marking 0 0.5 inches 0 0.75 inches on both sides and then i'll just simply blend it link it up to the um that leg on the waistline as you can see i'll link it up to the that leg of the waistline and then contour it to the on to the bust line 
so right here i'm utilizing the curvy part of my pattern master to contour it to give it that bust like curve towards the bust line now remember that on the bust line i came back by i came down by 0 0.5 inches so guys like i mentioned um earlier that this is simply a regular bustier blouse you can simply attach a yoke okay just drop the neckline of your choice for those who want to make use of a yoke okay so guys the next thing to simply do is to convert this bustier blouse to a victorian corset and one of the steps to take is waist snatching this is totally dependent on the amount of pressure you want to exert on your self on your stomach on your body area okay so it varies for different clients okay so for this tutorial we'll be snatching by 1.5 inches we'll be making of 1.5 inches reduction on the total waist measurements okay so i'll be using 1.5 inches it is simply not a standard you can snatch your waist by two inches you can snatch your waist by three inches it's just simply dependent on how much you want it how much pressure you want to exert on yourself so for the sake of this tutorial i'll just simply do an illustration with 1.5 inches okay so guys my waist measurement is 34 inches my round waist measurement is 34 inches and I'm going to be subtracting 1.5 inches from my total waist measurement. So having done this, what I got was 32.5 inches, okay? So I'm going to be dividing this 32.5 inches by 4 because as you can see, the pattern is placed on fold. And dividing it by 4, I got 8 inches. So guys, I'm going to be um, subtracting um eight inches from the total waist measurement we have on fold so guys the initial um measurements we have on the waist on fold is 8.5 so 8.5 minus 8 inches i have 0 0.5 inches i hope we understand this part okay so i'm going to take it again the initial waist measurement is 8.5 inches on fold okay so I'm going to be marking the new measurement here, which is 8 inches. The snatched measurement is 8 inches now. Then the dart intake there is 1.5. Okay. So what we have remaining is 0 0.5 inches. So I have 0 0.5 inches left. So I'll be snatching the waist by 0 0.5 inches. It means I'm taking away 0 0.5 inches from the total waist measurement. So I'm going to be linking this. Um, waist reduction to the chest line and down to the hip line okay we'll get to see um, this but because of the surface area we're not able to cover down but you get to see what I did much later as the tutorial proceeds okay so I'm going to shade this um, area which is the snatched region okay so this is what was taken out from the total um, waist measurements okay guys so we're done here. The second step um, in creating, um, converting a bustier blouse to a Victorian corset is placing your multiple darts. So this is dependent on you. You can go ahead and place as many darts as possible. Okay. So just know that the more darts you place, the more, um, um, well, I say tedious the process is for you. So I'll simply make use of um, just one additional dart for this tutorial. So this is uh, more like a standard for you to use and place as many darts as possible you want to um, use for your project. Okay. So I just simply drew a straight line from the um, armhole. I just drew a straight line from the armhole line down to the hip line. On the waistline, I'm, I'll be going out. I will be going towards the center front and the side front by 0 0.5 inches. So I'll mark 0 0.5 inches on the waistline. I'll also mark 0 0.5 inches on the under bust line. And I'll simply go ahead and link these two points together. And then also link it up to the bust line and down to the hip line. Okay, we all know how to um, place a dart on our pattern. Okay, so... Um, I'll link it down to the hip line, just narrow it down to the hip line, one inch above the hip, the hip line and then also link it up, do the same, narrow it up to the um, bust line, okay, just like we did for the other waist that, so it's a very easy process, okay. 
So having done this, what I'll simply do next is to replace the DAT intake, okay? The DAT intake I did for the multiple DAT, which is this DAT I'm touching particularly, I'm going to be replacing the DAT. So your multiple DAT is totally different from your waist snatching, okay? So I'll be replacing this DAT on the side front. So I'll be replacing there by one inch, I'll be marking one inch, okay? And then I will link it up to the chest line and narrow it down to the hip line. So in other words, I'm incorporating the shaded area back into the pattern. Um, I simply hope this is clear. And if you have any questions, as I said, we're all here to learn. Just let me know where you missed out and I would simply explain it again, okay? So you narrow it up to the chest line so like i mentioned earlier we have incorporated the shaded area back into the pattern so guys this is it for this is it for um for this part okay i hope we understand okay this this particular um, stage we've gotten into i hope we all um, have a clear understanding here to this point okay so the next thing i'll simply do here is to label it it's very important that we label our patterns the, label your panel okay so that you don't miss out on anything the process of cutting out using your pattern to cut out on your fabric you don't get it all mixed up mixed up okay so you can see that i simply labeled it into one two three highlighting the center front highlighting the mid front and then highlighting the side front okay so i'll simply go ahead and create my the neckline of my victorian corset if i am not making use of a yoke like i mentioned earlier that i won't be needing a yoke for this tutorial but if you're needing using a yoke this part is simply not necessary okay but i'll be making any um, use of the yoke so i'll just simply come down there by 0 0.75 and then link it up just to create a neckline more like a sweetheart neckline for my pattern okay so guys the next thing i'll simply do is to blend it is to blend the armhole okay to blend it i'll just simply go ahead and blend this part properly okay yeah i think we're good here okay okay guys so on the hip line okay i'm going to be creating a curvy structure on the hip line we all know that our regular victorian corset has a curvy side area okay so up down there i'm be moving up by three inches and then i'll curve it towards um, um the um, front i'll just curve it this way curve it towards the center front as if you're turning towards the center front or not necessarily on the center front so i'll just curve it you can curve it a bit more deeper it depends on how you want it you can curve it to get towards the center front properly okay so i just curved it a little bit towards the center front not necessarily um, directly on the center but it was tending towards the center front so i'll go ahead and cut out the pattern as you can see me doing so this is all for the front pattern and after doing this we'll proceed um, to drafting our back pattern yeah okay guys so this is what we have for the front pattern as you can see this is what we have this is what it looks like after the step-by-step -step process okay so now this is the back um for the back illustration we have the zipper allowance and then we have the bust line we have the the waist line and then we have the hip line okay and then we all know this is the armhole curve and then this is the chest line so i'll just quickly label it ch chest line okay so guys the next thing we'll simply do on the waistline i'll simply move in by 0 0.5 inches sorry 0 0.5 inch okay simply because um if we want to incorporate um a zip into your bustier blouse there's need for you to do this okay 
so I will just um, link it up to the bust line and then narrow it down to the hip line okay okay guys we're good here this is basically for um, zip attachment okay so um, the next thing we'll simply do is to um, place our back darts the waist darts for the back pattern so simply we'll do the same thing from that point there I'm going to be marking four inches and I'll do the same I'll mark the same four inches which indicates our half bust span like we mentioned earlier so I'll mark it on the hip line and then I'll go simply go ahead and link up these points together, okay? I'm sure by now we're conversant with this process, having watched it in the um, previous pattern, which is for the front pattern, okay? So just like I did for the front pattern, I'll be marking 0 0.75 on both sides on the waistline. And then I'll narrow it down to the hip line and I also link it up to the um, bust point, okay? Okay, and then link it down as well okay guys so this is it the next thing we'll simply do is to um, place the horizontal measurement okay so um, we all know that um, there will not be any need for me explaining all over again the um, waist snatching process i will just go ahead and place the measurement for the um, snatch to waist line which is eight inches okay i wouldn't want to repeat the process all over and over again so the snatch to waist line is eight inches so i'll just simply go ahead and mark eight inches on the pattern okay i will mark eight inches here and then I will be replacing the dart intake of 1.5 inches. Okay, guys. Then I'll go ahead to also place the hip measurement and then just link it up, okay? On the bust line, you simply know it's the quarter of your bust measurement. So I'll just mark the quarter of my bust measurement right away, which is the same thing I'll be marking on the chest line. Okay, also incorporate the quarter of your hip measurement on the hip line. Okay, so I'll go ahead and connect these three points together. So guys, if you have watched today's points and you learned something from the tutorial, it has been able to add one or two to your sewing process. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share. And most importantly, subscribe. Please subscribe. Encourage us so that we can make more videos. Okay? So guys, the next thing we'll simply do is the placement of your multiple darts. Like I mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and place as many darts as possible. Okay? So for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just be placing one additional dart. And just like I did for the previous, you draw a straight line linking from your armhole straight down to your hip line and then we utilize this line for our second dart okay so we're placing the second dart for the back pattern so i just simply went towards the side and sent um side front sorry the side back and the center back by 0 0.5 inches okay and i narrowed it down to the hip line and up to the um, bust line as you can see okay so the next thing to do is to replace your dart intake okay so i'll just replace just like i did for the front pattern it's one inch there so i'll just go ahead and mark one inch so like i stated earlier that your dart intake is totally different from your um, waist snatching okay so i'll go ahead and replace this and then i'll narrow it up to the chest line and down to the hip line okay so just watch me i'll be using the straight part you can use a meter rule to do this or your pattern master whatever one you feel comfortable with, whichever one you feel comfortable working with okay so guys haven't done this okay haven't done this i'll go ahead and snatch the back again i'm going to be snatching i'll move in by 1.5 inches 
okay so this is me snatching the back um, pattern again by 1.5 inches okay so doing this i won't be replacing there will be no replacement for this particular process okay so i'm snatching the back again by 1.5 inches and then i drew a straight line okay so this line will be where i'll be attaching my loops okay so as you can see i'm just trying to make sure that we understand um what i'm trying to see okay so yeah this is what we have here then just like we did for the front i'll be i'll go ahead and then okay draw it connects i'll connect the chest line to the bust line okay just link it up okay i'll just link it up yeah so this automatically becomes um the neckline for the back if you're not going to be using a yoke it becomes your neckline your, your real neckline for your back linking your chest line to the bust line okay so but if you want to attach a yoke all you need to do is to do this just create a neckline of your choice you don't have to you know do this particular um link it up this way you can go ahead and create a neckline of your choice and then this automatically becomes your yoke it could be curvy it could be a straight line whichever one you feel comfortable working with so just explore um, um creativity when it comes to um, um pattern creation creating a pattern just be very creative at this point so just like we did for the front pattern down there i'll go ahead i'll go upwards by three inches and then connect it towards the center back okay so it can be deeper than this okay it can be deeper than this you can use the curvy part of your pattern master to create it towards your center back okay so this is what i want for this illustration and here we are this is this back pattern for this tutorial okay guys thank you so much for watching i will see you in my next video have a great day bye